Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. In Pike County in Missouri, in July of 1971, north of the town on Highway 79, Joan Mills and Mary Ryan were having a picnic lunch when they encountered a hairy humanoid on River Road. They both wrinkled up their noses at the same time as an incredibly bad smell assaulted them. Behind a bushy thicket was the top half of a hairy, man-like creature with a human-like face and not a gorilla. It was a hairy, half-ape, half-man, and made a gurgling sound. The arms were covered with hair, but not the hands or palms, and it walked upright while its arms dangled way down. The women rushed for their Volkswagen. The hairy humanoid followed and tried to open the doors, which the women had locked as they got in. Mills, though, had left the car keys in her purse, which was still with the picnic stuff on the ground. They were in the car, and the keys were on the other side of the hairy humanoid. Mills then hit the horn, and the hairy humanoid jumped straight up and moved back eventually to what it must have believed was a safe distance, where it picked up a peanut butter sandwich and ate it in one gulp. Then it picked up the purse with the keys in it, probably to eat it as well, but dropped it instead and disappeared back into the woods. Joan Mills retrieved her keys, and the two women drove away to St. Louis, where they reported the event to the Missouri State Patrol. On to the next one. Near Salem in Dent County in Missouri. Hi, my name is Kevin. I'm 52 now. I went hunting with my dad in Dent County, near what is now called Lake 117, east of Salem, Missouri, in Mark Twain National Forest. I was approximately a quarter of a mile from the old farmhouse up a tree with a view from 10 feet off the ground approximately. Anyhow, I remember seeing a doe running by my stand looking scared and then I saw why. There was a tall black man running after it, except that was not a black man chasing a deer naked. It went to my left, and I could hear loud thrashing in the thick section of the wood, and I assumed it had caught the animal and was killing it. Astounded, I could not believe what I had just seen, and then it was when I turned to my right, and there he stood, twenty feet from my tree and was standing there looking at me. I remember thinking, who are these black men running naked through the woods? But wait, this was a very hairy being with a type of crest on its somewhat oddly shaped head. Black hair, but thinner in spots, and when we made eye contact, it growled very deeply. I was so frickin' scared, I could not understand what was going on. I have goosebumps and fear, Still to this day, I don't like being ridiculed. I have tears in my eyes now, trying to write this to people that might understand the situation. It was the scaredest I've ever been in my life, and I have had two guns pulled on me. Sorry, I'm wandering from my encounter. This being of the woods had black eyes and a light tan-colored nose that was somewhat triangular, looking to me so this giant, tall, very strong looking being turned and started running over towards the thrashing sound. I could not believe how lucky I felt. Just a step or two and it could have yanked me right out of the tree I was in. Soon as it was out of sight, I believe, I just jumped out of the tree I was in and started running up the logging road back to the farmhouse where my dad was. I remember stopping and turning around with my dad 30-30 and I shot in the direction of it and yelling at it to leave me alone. 
the rest of the way back to the farmhouse, approximately 300 yards. It was paralleling me in the thick woods, making all kinds of racket. I still get scared thinking of this. I felt I was lucky that it didn't kill me. It was around 11 or 12 when I finally got back to the farmhouse. My dad was there, having a nip, if you know what I'm saying. He could tell something was wrong with me, and I did my best to explain to him what was going on outside, so he headed out. But the beast must have headed back to the deer kill 300 yards away. I'm not sure if he ever truly believed me, and that really upset me. And I took his whiskey away from him and said, Now listen, Dad, you have to believe me what I just saw. Well, the owner of the farm arrived the next day, and he believed me. I was so relieved he truly believed me, and I could tell. He was a local doctor and told me he had seen giant footprints in the sand on his beach of his lake, what now is the conservation lake. He must have left them after he passed away. But I remember him being so interested in what had happened to me and truly believing me. Dang, this brings fear and tears to me still. The trying to understand what the heck was going on around me in this deer stand never been that scared again. It was so hard to see this and understand that it was real. So I've heard that it was a one in a million chance of this happening. All I can say is how lucky I was that I wasn't on the menu that day. So after analyzing this, I truly believe that even though they are giant, inside they won't hurt you but will harass you to leave them alone. And remember, never look them in the eyes. You will let out a very, very deep growl, and your legs will start shaking uncontrollably. I believe they just want to be left alone. They are still curious on how humans live. Think about it. They could take you without a problem, and you would have no chance at all. When I think back about this, this is what I have interpreted. I guess I would be famous if I had shot it, but I didn't have that in me, as I still don't think I do. They just want to be left alone. That's what I believe. It was early morning. There were at least two. They were chasing a deer and caught one. On to the next one. In Troy, in Lincoln County in Missouri, a hairy humanoid with a hair-covered face and no neck was seen. It left three toed footprint and was not a bear. On to the next one. In the Couver River near Hoover State Park in Missouri, two fishermen reported seeing a Bigfoot wading in a river and walking along the riverbanks toward them. This was also near Troy in Lincoln County. On to the next one. Doris Harrison, 15, and two other Harrison children, Terry Harrison and Wally Harrison, after Terry and Wally went to tend rabbits at the foot of Martha Hill, Doris heard a scream. She looked out of the bathroom window and saw a hairy humanoid by a tree. Dory and Terry described it as six to seven feet tall and black and hairy. It stood like a man, but did not look like one. The children started crying and ran to their mother. The creature had no neck and was carrying a dead dog flecked with blood under its arm. Harrison's own dog vomited for three hours afterward, and its eyes grew red. Terrible odors emanated from the previous sighting of that area, and Mr. Edgar Harrison heard eerie howls as he and investigators prowled the site. Edgar Harrison the father of the Harrison children, who was the deacon of the local Pentecostal church 45 minutes after the regular Friday evening prayer meeting at his house, heard ringing noises such as could be caused by stones being thrown against the huge water reservoir on top of Marthoff Hill. After one loud ring, he heard a loud growl that got louder and louder and closer and closer. At the same time, his family came running from the house, urging him to drive off. Edgar wanted to stay and find out what was causing the noise. 
Eventually, he drove off down Allen Street across the town branch and stopped the car. His wife and family told the congression, here it comes, and the 40 people turned and ran down the street. Police officers Jerry Floyd and John Whittaker searched the Harrison residence and found nothing. Later that evening, Edgar Harrison and several others explored Marthoff Hill and discovered a pungent, unpleasant odor emanating like rotten garbage from an old building. On to the next one. Near Louisiana, in Pike County in Missouri, it was a moonlit night, just about dusk. A friend and I had gone to a party, but it was a bus when we got to the place out of town. I took off by myself down the road, toward the east, back to Route 70 to wait. I had been walking for about 25 to 30 minutes when the wind shifted from the south. I smelled something awful. A cross between a skunk and rotten flesh, like something died. As I was walking along the south side of the road, I noticed someone walking about 300 to 400 feet away along the edge of the woods on the south side of the pasture. I thought it was kind of late for a farmer to be bringing his cows in as they were in a big hurry to get away from him. About that time, I heard a god-awful blood-curdling scream, which I thought was the cattle screaming. I stopped to look across at the farmer, and he also stopped and stood still looking at me, which I considered odd. As I continued east, I watched as he matched my every move and would stop and stare when I did. The cows were gone by now, and the stench was getting stronger as what I thought was a man angled his way closer to me. I stopped and stared right at the thing. At that point, I knew it was not a man, as it was only walking and I was almost running. It was coming straight for me. It stood close to 11 feet tall and was covered with thick, matted, reddish-brown hair. I took off running as fast as I could for the next light down the road. It was a long way off, and as I looked over my shoulder, it stepped over a four-foot-high barbed wire fence without touching the wire. I knew I was in trouble. I ran for the faraway farmhouse as fast as I could go. My adrenaline was going, and I was scared out of my wit. As I approached the fence to get to the house towards the south, I realized that not only was the house much farther than I thought, but I was met by a pack of farm dogs at the gate. As I jumped the gate, I don't even think my feet touched the ground, into the pack of dogs. I didn't dare look back. I ran to the home of a farmer and pounded on the door, but the farmer would not open the door. I looked at the farmer, and I could tell he had seen the creature by the terrified and confused look on his face. I was so scared that I sat down on the porch in a ball and waited for the creature to leave. When I looked up, the creature was headed toward the same pasture where it had come from with the dog chasing after it. That was the last I saw of it. I ran and hid behind a tree until my friend joined me. I did not tell my friend what had happened. I have raised three daughters now, and for years I told the story of the monster while we were camping. About three years ago, I was messing around on the web, and I came across Bigfoot websites. I decided to check in the area and found multiple sightings of the monster at the exact same time and place of my mishap. It was Blacktop Rural Road with Pasture to the south and Hilly Woods to the north. On to the next one. After an unsuccessful search for Momo on the 19th, Edgar Harrison, Richard Crow, a reporter, and Lauren Smith went up to Marthoff Hill near the tree where Doris had seen Momo was a circular spot where leaves and twigs had been stripped from branches, and further along, someone or something had been digging in an old garbage dump. Nearby were two disinterred dog graves with the bones scattered about. Tracks were found higher up the hill that were over 10 inches long by 5 inches wide, as well as possible handprints 5 inches long. The prints were in hard soil, 
and would take considerable weight to make them. At the imagined building, Harrison's dog ran away, and the overpowering stench like stagnant water or rotten flesh assaulted them. In the distance, dogs were barking furiously. No Momo was seen, but certainly heard. On to the next one. Just before dawn broke, Mr. and Mrs. Bill Sunnard, on their farm northwest of the town, heard a high-pitched howl in their yard, grabbed their flashlight, and headed outside. In the middle of the yard, they found four tracks of a three-toed creature. Mr. Sunnard quickly rang Clyde Penrod, a hunting buddy who drove over to make plaster casts of the print, which beginning and ending nowhere. The prints were narrow, long, perfectly formed, and clearly showed three toes. On to the next one. When I was eight years old, I was mushroom hunting with my mom and several cousins in the woods near my grandparents' home in rural Louisiana, Missouri. We were in a deep hollow that was heavily wooded when all of us started mentioning this horrible smell. Since there seemed to be no source of the smell, we decided to head back up to the car because we knew about the Momo that had been occurring in and around Louisiana. No one was at home at my grandparents, so we all piled back into the car. My mom had leapt down the window, and within a few minutes, we heard something let out a scream. My mom said it sounded like a panther scream, but between the horrible smell and the scream, we did not investigate. We left in a hurry. My grandma, while picking blackberries in this area, also encountered the strange smell and may have actually seen the creature out of her back door that summer. She had a lilac bush about six feet tall, about 25 feet from her back door. One night, she was looking out and saw what appeared to be two red glowing eyes peering back at her. My aunt and uncle, on two separate occasions, encountered what may have been Momo. Both sightings occurred that summer in the evening hours. Each said they had seen two glowing red eyes, and as they drove closer, they seen what appeared to be a large, about eight-foot-tall hairy creature standing on its hind legs staring at them. Also, some neighbors of ours who lived a few miles from my grandparents had seen the creature in their gardens in their backyard behind their houses. It ran away when they came out, but having just rained, the creature had left its footprints behind. They had plaster casts, and I actually saw them. It was about 14 to 16 inches long. All of the events had witnesses, except when my aunt was alone, and both encounters that involved my grandma, as described in the story. Most sightings occurred at night. The mushroom encounter occurred in the daytime hours. It was warm and sunny. I hope you enjoyed those encounters, and if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day, so be sure to hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much, and until next time, bye!